Hi knitters, welcome to PJ Knits. My name is Penny, I'm also known as PJ, and I live in central Illinois, and I'm a knitter, a blogger, and a YouTube podcaster. Thank you for coming back to uh, listen to my knitting journal and help build this community. Um, I've had having so much fun with your comments and with things that I want to tell you about. Um, last month, I, I kind of went, I had notes and I went off the cuff. And then when I got done, I was like, oh, I forgot to say this. I forgot to say that. So um, I have notes today. And so I'm going to uh, <laughs> try and stick to them a little bit. So anyway, let's get started. First off, weather report for Central Illinois here at Shea PJ Nets. On Thursday, February 16th, um, it's 36 degrees, uh, 11 o'clock-ish, and it's raining. And what I really thought that I was going to wake up to this morning was freezing rain and the road slippery and things like that. And then we were supposed to have like one to three inches of snow. And I think we're going to get some snow later on this afternoon, but right now it's just raining. And so I'm thankful for those of my family and friends who have to go out and drive today that we're not getting all that weather right now. And I don't know that we're going to get all that kind of snow. Um, but... That's the nice thing about being retired. I don't have to go out when I don't want to. So I have no plans for today other than to podcast here. Um, and it's supposed to get cold tomorrow, but it's back up to 40 and 50 again next week. And I have, I have to say, I have been enjoying um, the weather that we've been having, even though it's not 100% sweater weather all the time. But, well, for me, it's a little bit it's a little bit sweater weather because I'm, I'm, um, I'm always cold no matter what, even in 90 degrees. But anyway, um, I'm loving the sunshine that we had um, last week. I went out to the park and took a little uh, walk around our local lagoon um, and sat and knit for just a little bit when it was, you know, in the 50s. I enjoyed that day. And so I do enjoy getting out when the sun's shining, um, taking just a little knitting adventure and, and heading out. So that's, you know, that's kind of been what's been happening here at uh, Shea PJ Knits um, recently. So let's get started. Um, grab your knitting, grab a cuppa of whatever you choose. Um, mine's, again, caramel macchiato today, no surprise. And um, I hope that you view this as something to sit back and knit to. That's what I really like about a lot of um, knitting podcasts is that I can sit back and just enjoy them. Um, showing me things and enabling me and taking me down paths that um, I normally wouldn't find. Um, Ravelry used to do that for me back in the day, and now I'm, I, I do do Ravelry. Um, I am Penny J on Ravelry, and our group for the podcast is under PJ Knit. So I hope that you will check in there. And um, there are multiple threads going on for a lot of things because that's really where any of um, the um, easily to show pictures. But also on Instagram, I am PJ Knits and I'm always on that. And if you would tag me, I'm um, that would be so much fun as well. So um, I, as I said, I have a blog. It's www.pjknits.blogspot.com where I post pictures. Of, I post pictures last week of the lagoon and the geese slash ducks that were out there and uh, and just the gorgeousness of sitting there and just listening and watching the water. So anyway, those are the places that you can find me. So grab your cuppa, grab your knitting, sit back, and uh, let's talk about some knitting. So things that I wanted to tell you about last time and totally um, skimmed over and we're in we're way into February mid-February right now so I wanted to I, last time I was going to just talk about my January um, journal list and I have um, and I'm just going to pop here up close to so you can see what it kind of sort of looks like where there are arrows that means I pushed it on to February and sometimes they go from February to March to April if there's a check mark by them I finished them with the finish date and along with my squares, and I'm trying to um, uh, put a few little stickers here and there as well. I also took, um, stole something from, um, let 
Naughty Nitty, Naughty Nitty, Nitty Naughty, her podcast. Something that she's doing is an in and out for the year. And so I'm just doing kind of like an out and an in of what's coming out of my personal yarn shop. And so you can see that um, a couple of things, um, and we talked about those before, came into it to, to do a particular sweater. Um, and then some, um, my finished object, my uh, cozy classic raglan that I wore on the last podcast, that um, the finger wing weight came out of the stash. So here's kind of what January wrapped up to look like in my journal. And this is what February is looking like right now. And you'll notice at the bottom of my journal pages, I'm starting to put in knitting adventures or things that I would like to do maybe like next year or the year after and when they when they were. And this is really dream, probably cup of this particular one, the Vogue Knitting Live that was last weekend. That's probably for me a dream. That's probably never something that I'm going to do. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I am. One never knows, right? But I like to, I'm putting them in the monthly pages so that I can, um, you know, for future reference next year, um, think about possible things I'd like to do in the wintertime. So here's what February's um, looking like right now. And I'm just kind of having some fun with that, with my journal. Um, I um, did add a couple of things to my, um, what I finished um, on my finished page that I do as well, kind of keeping tabs as well. But I wanted to share that, my journal, what I, what I uh, put into the journal um, for January and February and where we're at. So something that I um, have been uh, kicking around um, for a while and um, Carol reached out to me, a friend from another Zoom uh, reached out to me and she, when I talked about whether um, I'd like to do another Zoom for uh, a knit night for PJ Knits. And I've decided that I'd like to do it on Saturday nights. We're going to start out this Saturday um, on Zoom. We will start at 6 o'clock and go to 8, 8.30, depending on how far and how many there are of us. Um, you know, Carol suggested, why not just go out and do it, you know? And if nobody shows up, then I don't have to continue. But if we have somebody um, to show up, uh, and we talk, and we're, it's going to be all about talking knitting and getting to know each other and building a, a community now. Um, the reason I chose Saturday night is a couple of reasons. For me, as I've said before, sometimes the weekends are the worst because everybody else has their things they're doing, right? And when you're, um, you know, that just happens. That's, you know, that's just the way it is. And I think sometimes Saturday night are really the, really the quietest, let's, let's put it that way, uh, for me. And I thought um, Sunday night we may catch some people who... Um, are work, go ahead, still are working, and they wouldn't want to spend their Sunday nights. You know, I remember when I was working, a lot of times you were getting ready for the next day, finishing up laundry and doing other things and, and just planning your week. So I decided that we would start this Saturday, um, the 18th, again, starting at 6 o'clock, and that is Illinois time, which is Central Standard, Standard Time. Um, I will put the info for the Zoom on the PJ Knits Ravelry group. With the th on the thread there so you know how to get in. If you do not use Ravelry, if you want to send me an Instagram message or if you want to email me, the email address is pjknitspodcast at gmail.com and I will send you the, um, the information for logging in. So I hope that you will join me um, this Saturday. We'll see how it goes and, and do a few Saturdays down the road and um, and just see how it goes. So I hope you can join me. Okay, so what's up next? Finished objects. First off, I want to talk about Yum. I'm calling it Yum now because there's no accent on it, I guess. And you all, if you've, if you've been watching me for a while, you have been seeing me knit on this. I purchased the yarn... Um, last July from Elgin Knitworks 
when we were at the uh, mini meetup. And I started it on September 7th, and I finished it on Valentine's Day. I was bound and determined to get it done. Here's a picture of it. It is by Isabel Kramer. And I chose to do the long sleeve. I bought Remix Light um, in a purple. It's um, just in a purple. This particular sweater for me, in a size, I did the M1, which is a 41 and a half finished bust this particular one of the Remix Light, and this has good yardage on it. It is uh, 432 yards, and for my size and for um, making the mods that I did, which you can find on my project page on Ravelry, um, I just used almost all of three skeins. I had a small little smidge left when I was all done, and um, so um, it, it took three skeins. I am pleasantly surprised at how much that I liked this Remix Light. Um, I thought it was going to be scratchy and itchy. I did it on a, um, I cast it on with a size 5 needle um, and pretty well maintained that all along. Um, yeah, I, I didn't. The one thing that I did do when I got to the sleeves, as I do, is I picked up extra stitches, but I went up to a size seven on my sleeves because I wanted to make sure, again, that I that I had sufficient room here, and I do, I do. I like just the way it is. I did my method of decreasing for the sleeve to, to um, take care of that, also that extra um, arm that I have underneath, and so, um, I, that's the only modifications, major modifications that I made. Like I said, I was pleasantly surprised at how much I like this. Um, it is not scratchy or itchy. It is 30% um, nylon, 20% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, and 9% linen. So there's absolutely no wool in this. And this is going to be, knitters, a great... Um, yarn and a sweater for transition sweater. I see myself wearing this well into spring. And that's part of the sweater project that pe that I'm doing, PJ Knit Sweater Project, is that I want to have my sweaters ready for knitting when it, the season comes, not be knitting in them, hopefully. So, But anyway, I was pleasantly surprised at how much I love this yarn and how soft it is. Um, I am looking forward to wearing it a lot. It has just a little bit of lace up here, a good uh, start to a lace project, and then it is pretty much um, stockinette after that. So, um, like I said, I really do love this. I love the yarn, I love the design, and I'm gonna tell you, at the moment, I have not blocked it. And I don't think I'm going to, because I love everything about it right now. I love the way it fits. I love, um, she has this particular feature down the, the um, side seam, loving the lace. I love the fit of the neck. There was, it's not too gappy or anything. And um, I just see this being a, a, a really fun sweater for transitioning into spring and then again to bring it back out into the fall. Um, let's see. Yeah, other than switching my needles from a 5 to a 7, um, both, on, uh, both on the body and on the um, sleeves, um, I believe I did. I know I did on the body. I went from a, a size 5, sorry, a size 5, and then um, at nine and a half inches from the armhole, that's what I did, nine and a half inches from the armhole here, I switched to a size seven so that I would get a little bit more width in it. And I do that quite often, as I've talked before, in order to get to accommodate for the hips. And then I went back to my size five and I decreased some stitches for the hem rib so that it would not, um, so that I get a good fit down there as well. And, um, on this particular one, I believe it was a twisted rib, and I did not twist rib. I just did a regular two by uh, one by one um, rib. So those are the kind of modifications. And again, you can find those on my uh, P Penny J 
on the Ravel, my Ravelry project page. But I just, I really can't say enough about A, the pattern and the yarn. And I definitely, in a lighter color, I could see this happening. Um, I could see using this yarn again for your transitional sweaters. So um, shout out to that. Bought it at Elgin Knitworks again last um, a summer during the mini meet re mini meetup. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Next up. Next up is a say a say. This is a free pattern from uh, Espace Tricot. There's been a couple of renditions. Um, I, I, like I said before, when I was showing you all how when I knit it. This particular one is for hospice. Um, this pattern, um, this is my one, two, third one that I've done. Uh, first one went to hospice some time ago. Um, second one, it, I'll show you in just a, a bit, but this is my third one. And, I, and what I did on it is I took the original, the original pattern. This is Cascade Yarns 220 Superwash, um, the wave. And that's what gives it that lovely, lovely, um, gradient or wave um, reminds me so much of the oceans and that's why I picked it up. Um, on this one I used a size 6 needle on it. Um, I this My particular one on this I did 130 stitches and I made the repeat here through, um, through between the um, eyelets. Um, a little bit longer because what happened was I was at I was at hospice and I was knitting along and and whatever the pattern called for I went beyond that I'm like okay and that was on the first section and I thought okay from here on out we're going to do that same um, the same way and so that is it I on this particular one I used two skeins and 83 grams to finish it out and so I just I just love this this was a great great knit um, the the one that I knit some time ago that I just wanted to show you, um, this particular one was for me, but I knit it a couple of years ago. Um, this is out of a um, Madeline Tosh Prairie, which was a very, um, I want to say almost a lace weight, very fine fingering weight, and a uh, strand of mohair. That, again, this was an AZ that I bought, and I bought this particular yarn from Espas Trico some time ago. And it's just got a super... And I do not, I do not think that the prairie. In fact, I'm almost certain prairie is no longer a yarn that you can get from Madeline Tosh. But I was loving this. I wanted something a little elegant. You can see the little fuzz there, the little mohair. So I, I really like it. Again, this is a nice wrap just to throw on, but it's so soft. And so luxurious. Oh, I love this. I really love this too. So that was the second one that I made. And um, so you can do the thing I like. They've got another updated of the ASA. And you can do you can do whatever you want with it. You can do any kinds, any kind of uh, yarns, really, because this is really uh, you know a, a light worsted. You, I, like I said, I did jelly beans originally, and that was probably a light worsted as well. You can do it at a fingering weight. You can do a little, uh, just a little one uh, uh, for a small scarf if you want. They used originally Jade Sapphire Silf. Silf. And here's the pattern. Like I said, this is a freebie from Espace Trico. It still is. AZ. This is from the days of when uh, Melissa and Lisa um, had Espace Trico. So, but you can still get this pattern. And I highly recommend this. You know, I think this would be fun for a little wedding shawl too. Um, if you were so inclined for somebody who was getting married and wearing maybe like a strapless dress, um, kind of as a, um, just as a shower present. So um, I think this would be a great one. I think it'd be a great one to wear to a wedding if you're in the summertime and wearing um, a sundress or whatever, just to cover up the arms. So that's Aze and finished. And next week is hospice. And so then it is, um, it is going off to hospice next week. And then while we're talking finishing objects and here I'll give you an idea how big and long this one I made you can see it's pretty wide but I want it to cover um, it can cover laps or not 
and you can see the color variations in it as well. There you go. So I'm loving this. This is nice and soft and comfy cozy. And as you can see, it really comes down. So if somebody wants to wrap it on their shoulders or over their um, over their legs, you know, or even a, a, a taller person, um, that's possible going lengthwise. So um, I'm super, super pleased that that one is set to go. And then wow, the final finished object for this one. We talked about this last time. This is the row by row uh, sampler Cow by Irene Designs on Ravelry. She is part of um, the group of the uh, Three Ply Podcast ladies. And this one came out a um, couple of weeks ago. And here's some uh, pictures of this pattern. I just love this pattern. I took mine is out of some leftovers that I had of Carol Sunday. Uh, Eden yarn, which is I, it probably a little bit lighter weight than than um, I normally would have chosen for it, but I love this. I just love this design. This was a this was a lot of fun. It was a fairly quick project as well, and so easily done. And, and I mentioned before, you could definitely do this um, for some friends if you wanted to. <laughs> For gifts as well. So um, the thing that's super cool about this pattern is Irene is donating all of the proceed, proceeds to this to the Frivolous and Frugal, um, Frivolous and Frugal and Three Ply Podcast uh, mini uh, meetup in the summer up in Hoffman Estates. And if you don't know about that, you'll want to check out Frivolous and Frugal's um, Ravelry group and their podcast as well to get all the details on it. We are definitely going, um, Debbie and I and Kendra, and we had a lovely time last uh, last year. So um, anyway, um, all the proceeds to the pattern is going to um, the mini meetup expenses. I, on this particular one, I cast on with a size four needle. And the reason I did that is because I did not have my size... Um, Six needle. No. Yeah. Good gravy, Penny. Because I didn't have a size five. <laughs> you know, if you have a journal, you should put those notes in there, right? <laughs> edit. <laughs> edit, the, edit the journal. You know I don't edit the podcast, guys. Anyway, started with the size four because I couldn't find my size five. Then I found a size five. And so after... Um, row 23, I started doing uh, the size 5, and I did an extra repeat at the bottom, and this yarn, again, is Eden by um, Carol Sunday. It is in the Dove colorway. Okay, so, huh, let's get it up close and personal. Again, I love this. I love this yarn. I love this pattern, and I could see doing another one out of this um, pattern and then doing another uh, a little bit heavier weight yarn as well. So let me give you up close here in personal what it looks like. Super, super fun. I love this. I love the start of this. I love, love, love this. I can't, I, I just really, really like it, guys. Um, so I recommend this pattern. And like I said, I'm going to do it in a different, uh, maybe later on. And definitely, I put it on the other day because it was so windy outside that I could do just what you saw me do. And I um, um, tucked my hair down in. Oh, it's not going well. The sweater, there you go. There you go. I got to reblock that piece that's been on there. There you go. So I'm loving this one. I'm loving this one so much. This is this is a quick, a quick knit. Um, started on the second finished it on the 7th, and was wearing it, you know. So totally loving everything about this. And the thing I like, too, is I was putting it on my little Miss Manny here. Sorry. Definitely could see this in a heavier yarn and get make it a little bit longer and wider to go over the shoulders, right? So that is the row-by-row row sampler cowl. Now, for you all, because... 
I want to promote this pattern and, and I want um, more proceeds to go to um, Frivolous and Frugal Meetup. I would like for you to comment below um, and just put in the comment row by row and tell me what you would be knitting this year, um, cowl out of. And in the next podcast, I am going to choose five winners and um, I'm going to gift that pattern to you. Now, if you already have the pattern, we'll find something. We'll find another um, Irene design for you to, to purchase. But anyway, put it in the comments below, row by row. And uh, next podcast, I'll give five of them away and the proceeds will all go to, um, to Irene to donate. So uh, I think that's a wonderful thing she's doing and I'm looking forward to giving away some of those patterns to you as well. Um, okay. Something I forgot to tell you last time. <clears throat> I've talked about this before. PJ Knit Sweater Project. It is my intention, my goal, my thought process this year again to really, really, <laughs> two reallys. Uh, <laughs> I really want to have my sweaters done ahead of the season. I don't want to be knitting on a summer sweater in the summertime for the most part because I want to be wearing them then. Same thing when it comes for um, transitional and that's why this will be wonderful. Um, and if I get my rear end gear, I'll have some others, but um, to knit on right now. So what I really wanted to talk to you about last time as well is I had questions, you know, um, for you, wondering how do you choose your next sweater project for the next season? What's your thought process there? Um, and I'd love to know. I'd love for her to know either in the Ravelry group or in a comment as well if you want to do it there. But I'm always interested in how others, if others do that, or if you, like me in the past, have knit, oh, the summer patterns, I knit the summer, and then I get a small amount of wearing period for them, but I yet you have them for the next year, which is perfectly fine. So I'm wondering how you, or, or how do you just pick your next sweater pattern? Um, because there is so much out there, right? There's so many out there that I see on Instagram and on podcasts, and I'm like, my gosh, I need, you know, I need... Um, I need a fairy <laughs> that's knitting for me, you know, in the middle of the night because there's so many things I want to knit. And I think you can never have enough sweaters, you know, because our tastes change, you know, trends change, our body sh sh shapes, body shapes, <laughs> all right, erase that. Body shapes change. That's what happens when you try to talk too fast. Or maybe it's an age thing. No, it's not. I'm just saying. Anyway. Um, because there's Instagrams, there's Zooms, you know, the, you know, there's so many things that, you know, it's like, wow. And we have so many options. That's what's so, that's what's so fun about all of it, really. I, so my sort of process, thought process is, um, look at your Ravelry faves. And that's what I've done. I went back and looked at my favorites. What, you know, what, what's in my fave? What did I say when I saw it on a podcast, when I saw it on somebody else, um, uh, when I saw a picture of it? What made me want to have that sweater? And so then I took my journal and I made a list for from my faves, from my thoughts, of things that I would like to knit on. And I put them in my journal for this year. And I um, and some of it, some of it was um, some whips, most definitely, um, that I had a, that I made a list of, of a finished list or a cut bait, you know, either finish these this year or get rid of them. That's a whole nother thing. Or, I made a list, I made listings of possible sweaters as of January from my um, favorites, from my ideas that I wanted to do. And I put them in my journal. I also 
put them under the season that I should be wearing them in, right? And so I made a list of those, of favorites. And that first is ES, is early spring, spring. Then I have spring, I have spring, summer. I have just summer. And then on the next page, I had fall and some winter and some toys that I was, that I'm kind of thinking that I would like to knit. And these all kind of came from, um, from my favorites, from maybe um, patterns, most of them patterns in my library, because I talked about that before, how I'm really trying to do that as well. So I made a list, you know, and I'm a list maker, and I want to put in my journal um, for the year and maybe refer back to it as as the year goes by of thoughts, you know, and some, and I will add to this. These aren't necessarily ones that, you know, that I've already, they could be already on my monthly list as when to do them, but some of them, as they come up that I see something and I'm thinking, oh, you know, that's, I'm going to put that on my list because I really like that, but not hard, fast, set in stone, going to knit it. Just ones that I want to remember. So, and I, and I pulled some of those from my favorites off of Ravelry. So I encourage you to go out and look at your favorites on your Ravelry and then create bundles. If you're using Ravelry a lot, I did that. And I have put some out in our group um, that, I, that I like. Um, I'd love to add to that list um, and have you add to the list as well. I made some, uh, like right now, transitional pullovers and cardigans. And I took my favorites and pulled those into each one of those bundles on Ravelry. So that when I'm looking for a pattern and I'm thinking, oh, I had a favorite. I didn't really put it in my journal, you know, because it was just a, you know, a favorite that I saw. But I'm not by any means com committing to it. So I popped it in my favorites. And then I drilled down. Um, and put them into bundles so I can easily find them. You may find it easier to do it by season um, on the Ravelry uh, page, or as I did by season in my journal so that I have a hard copy of that. The other thing I am doing is I am looking critically at my favorites. What made me favorite them? Why did I favorite that? If I don't know why I favorite it, then I'm unfavoring it because obviously it, it was a fly-by-night one that I'm like, oh, it wasn't one that I, or, or I looked at it and there's like, I have no intention of ever doing all of that cable work, maybe, or lace work. But I look at them really critically and decide, what did I like about them? Was it the designer? Is it a designer that I love, that I've knit their patterns before and I'm going back to? Um, was it someone else? Was it someone who knit it? took a picture of it on their body and put it on Ravelry and had a similar body type to me. And I said, yeah, she can wear it, then I can probably wear it as well. Um, is it a yarn that I have in my personal yarn shop that was like, oh, that would be great in what I already have. And I could see myself knitting that. So I really encourage you to look at your favorites and then tell me um, what, how do you choose your next, your next sweater to knit on? I'm wondering too, is there a transitional early spring sweater that you're looking at knitting right now? Again, please in either the comments or in the Ravelry thread, let us know what that is because I always like more ideas for my favorites, right? And just a quick reminder for you all, spring starts Monday, March 20th. That's a month and four days away, right? Not even. A month and two days because we're 28 days here, right? Yeah. So a month and, you know, we're a little bit like a month and we're into spring. So, and it goes through June 21st. So there's plenty of time to be knitting and wearing those sweaters and be ready for the season, right? So some of the things that I just wanted to kind of touch bases with you and talk to you about when it came to, um, to my thought for my sweater project. And really, I would love to know your, you all's ideas as well as to how you go about that. And let us know if there's a transitional sweater that you're looking at. Now, one of the things that I talked about last time is 
that's on that is definitely on my list and has been um, thanks to some others on uh, the dude knits um, zoom on Tuesday nights is the autumn leaf pullover and I want to tell you that I did my swatch for this out of the Madeline Tosh uh, DK Ma Molly Ringwald that I showed and I had I made a swatch. I made some notes on the back of my pattern because this is what I do with the paper pattern before I put it into my journal. And I made a swatch. And then what I'm finding with my swatch right now on um, a size 7 needle, the gauge for um, the pattern itself is 19 stitches to 4 inches. And I'm getting about 21 and 3 quarters and, um, on a size 6. And on a size 7, which I very rarely have a change if I go down just down or up a size of a needle, I'm getting 20 and 3 quarter stitches. So um, I'm still, I'm kind of debating as to going a little, just a, maybe a size 8, size 9, um, and just casting on. But I haven't yet because I'm vacillating about that. And this is, this is kind of what I do, and I'm trying to get out of doing another swatch. Um, so anyway, that's where I'm kind of sort of in this because I would love to have this for the springtime as well and be knitting on this. It's a two of wands pattern. So um, I'm thinking hard about that. I'm thinking about whether I want to continue with my Molly Ringwald or if I want to go something um, a little bit different on the yarn. So that's, that's one of my sweaters that's a transitional sweater into the spring that I am looking at. Okay, so I'm kind of looking at that, and then next up, um, again, I talked about this book last time. This is 52 Weeks of Easy Knits, and then, you know, I hate to beat a dead horse with it, but I am loving this book. I am loving so many things out of this. Um, I just, there, it, there's sweaters in here that I just want to knit. There's socks. I talked about that before. There's fall sweaters. Um, there's even, there. I, I just am, what can I say? I'm loving everything about this book and I'm so pleasantly surprised about it. I think this particular one, it's called Corali and I, I earmarked this for summer. Um, and we talked about it, it's out of a worsted weight yarn. But I see, I see this in maybe Remix itself, not a Remix light. So I'm seriously thinking about this um, as well. I think that'd be a wonderful sweater for summer. And like I said, I'm going to investigate just regular Remix because I love the Remix light so well. There are so many patterns in this. And I just wanted to tell you that um, when I purchased mine, this is, there's 52 different knits in here, right? It was $51.95. So if you divide that by 52, this is just a little over a dollar a pattern in this book. I think this is a very good, um, very good um, book for the buck, as it would be. I'm, I'm, I would urge you to look at some of the sweaters um, on it, and you know that there's several on here that are on my list. So anyway, um, I'm loving this 52 Weeks of um, Easy Knits. And... What I want to do, I want to celebrate our 500 subscribers, right? Thank you, thank you. It, it's not about getting the numbers, but it is nice to know that what I am, um, what I am putting out there that people are inspired by. And, um, you know, if nothing else, um, you know, just sitting, hanging out and, uh, and uh, doing some knitting. I, I love that. So I am going to give away a book that I purchased from my local yarn shop, The Fiber Universe, to celebrate um, 500 subscribers. And what I need you to do is like, please like, give a thumbs up to this video. Thumbs up, that helps. And um, please subscribe. Um, I would love for you to tell friends and people about the other knitters about this if, if you are getting something out of here. And I would like you to comment below. And in the comment, I would like you just to say, 
um, 52 weeks. Um, and in the next podcast, I will give this book away to a lucky subscriber. So I am looking so much, I am looking so forward to giving the book away if you've not got it, because I just, I love, I love books. Um, I have a library. Um, I have a lot of books and I just love them. Even again, it goes back to the personal yarn stash. It is, they've given me enjoyment. Um, and the fact there are some of them just to look at, except for one that I bought. And I talked about that before where, um, I really, if I, I should have knit something out of it before the patterns hit Ravelry. But anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. Not going to worry about that. So anyway, comment below, right? Okay, um, the knit along, Burra Cowl. Next episode, I will show my progress on mine. If you go out, there is a hashtag PJ Knits Burra Cowl, and there's also a hashtag Burra Cowl 2023, and you can see what everybody is knitting on. Um, there's, there's several. Um, James from Dude Knits has finished his um, that he did in the Shetland wool, and um, his, the color was he wanted, and there are multiple. Um, uh, Instagram posts out there of people that have um, shared their um, color colors with. Um, Peggy is moving along on hers as well. So keep uh, uh, keep knitting on those. And next time I will um, um, uh, show you my progress. I just want to give a shout out though to Marie Wallen because I uh, bought my Shetland book um, several years ago from Schoolhouse Press when it first came out. And at that time, there was no option for putting um, the patterns, getting the pattern from Ravelry, right? Doing the Ravelry code. And so with advice of, from some of, of a viewer, I went out to and sent an, an email to Marie Wallen, to her info at Marie Wallen or whatever, and said, you know, I, you know, I could, I, is it possible to get a code or to get a PDF of a particular pattern? Because I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to flatten my book totally to make a copy of it um, and, and anything like that. So it took a couple of days um, over the weekend and she sent me um, uh, to my to a Dropbox. She sent me the uh, PDFs of all the patterns so that now that when I'm ready to knit each one, I can just print it off of the, the PDF. So I thought that was super, super cool of a designer to do that um, and... and um, uh, for me, you know, and I, and I could have went the other option as well. So, um, this Burra Cow uh, Knit Along for me goes through the end of July and there will be prizes of, you know, inter between now and then and a, and a prize also at the end of the Knit Along. A lot of, um, it is a multi podcast Knit Along. I will, um, post them. Um, below and I'll also give their names again um, next time and so a lot of theirs they're doing over the year um, there are different rules that apply to everybody but we're pretty um, it's pretty uh, loose as far as that's concerned and definitely you can um, double triple quadruple um, in all the podcasts um, please do show show them your nets because they would love for you to tag them and um, show as well so um, there, that's one of the fun things about this is that we can definitely do that. So, um, anyway, that's the Burrow Cow. We'll talk more about that in the next episode. So let's do mail call, but first let's take a little break. <laughs> and I know Valentine's Day was over. Did you buy yourself flowers? I did. And I played the song for Miley Cyrus as well. This is a mug. One sec. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is a mug that my friend Brenda gave me last year in the height of everything that was going on. And I, you know, I don't, I don't just reserve this mug. She gave me a set of two. I don't reserve the mug just for Valentine's Day, but I do do, I do use it heavy then. And, and because I love a big mug so you can get a lot of coffee in it. And today's the perfect day for it with a drizzle and everything else. So I hope you're having a couple as well. So hmm, mail call. 
something I purchased from my local yarn shop, and I'm going to show you them in in works here. But this was um, these are mini and pearl stitch stoppers, um, US two to eleven, and I bought a set in yellow and a set in green. And I'm going to tell you, I like these mid stoppers. They stay on my needle, on my sweater. And so I'm loving that. I just wanted to share share those with you, M&Ms. Who doesn't like a good M&M, right, Nettie? <laughs> that was one. And then I got a surprise in my mailbox from my friend Becky that I met oh so long ago, actually not that long, some years back at ZK and we've kept in contact. She's part of our travelers knitting group that we get together in uh, parts of the uh, Midwest um, every year and have some uh, knitting, uh, knitting adventures. And so I got a bag of yarns to put in to my Cozy Memories blanket. And I'll be showing that again, too. Thank you, Becky, so much. Um, and along with that, she gave me a wonderful little card. And I have put that in my journal, as I am doing with my nitty friends. Isn't that super, super cute? <laughs> and these are um, some minis that were left over. She's used them in hers. And... She wanted to make sure that, that somebody else could use some of them. And these were from a Row One subscription that have a lot of yarn companies, including some Wester Sky Knits. And, you know, I've seen Row One um, subscriptions. Um, I don't have one, but I've seen those on... Um, the Naughty Knitwits. Naughty Knitwits, right? Leslie and Michelle. And, by the way... Anyway, so I'm super, super stoked about those, and I'm dying to put one into my blanket as soon, but I wanted to make sure y'all saw those before I did that. Um, back to the original, way back in the beginning, and because I don't edit, remember when I said um, about the in and out on my yarn? Nitty Natty. Nitty Natty. That's who it was. That's where I stole that idea from. I just wanted to to, to clarify that. It just came to mind when I said, if I said Naughty, naughty Knitwoods before, that's not right. Um, anyway, Knitty Natty. And so that's the thing. And then the Stitch Stoppers. So I wanted to share my mail call with you. And then a section that I'm bringing back now called um, Books and Bags. And this was some books that I wanted to share from my library, just kind of talk to you a little bit about them. These books were on my list last time that I failed to do and this particular one is well loved um you all or maybe you don't all know but I just to let you know I am a fan of all things Elizabeth Zimmerman have been forever probably um 35 years plus and also Meg Swanson they are they are you know they are the ones who got me back into knitting um, certainly Elizabeth did. She got me back into knitting when um, I really didn't have other knitters around me. And so um, these are uh, well, well uh, loved favorites that I wanted to share with you last time. This is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitter's Almanac. This is the first issue that I bought, and I bought this so long ago. And you can see it is well, well loved. This is an interesting book, and I will say this because every once in a while, I shouldn't say every once in a while, almost every year I pull it back out and I think, wouldn't this be fun to follow along in the footsteps of Elizabeth Zimmerman every month in the new year? Well, it's not happening this year, but it may happen at some point in time. So I, this is just a lovely um, a lovely pull-out book to, to see, and she starts out with, always with a little story. Um, this one is the Erin sweater in for January, and she just starts out with um, a little story, um, several pages, actually, and then she goes into the knitting of the sweater and talks about um, what, what, what you're going to do and what you should be aware of, 
And those of you who don't know about Elizabeth Zimmerman, Elizabeth Easy makes you think about knitting. Um, she doesn't just give you the play-by-play, -play, you follow it. So you have to think about, you have to um, go beyond, you have to think for yourself. You are, um, you, she um, doesn't want you to be necessarily a blind follower. She wants you to, you know, live up to your knitting potential and think and, and go beyond just following a pattern. And that's what I like about her because she, you know, she, she made me and makes me um, think more about uh, my knitting um, and going beyond my basic skills that I started with. So that's what I love about, I love about um, Elizabeth. And I love about the almanac because um, if, if nothing else, I love to read every month, kind of like um, a devotional, if you would say, um, every month of what she was thinking and what was going on. And um, I'm just gonna share just a couple of lines here. It says, uh, in the start of this for January, once upon a time, there was an old woman who loved to knit. She lived with her old man in the middle of a woods in a curious one-room schoolhouse, which was rather untidy and full of wool. Every so often, as she sat knitting by the warm iron stove or under the dappled shade of the black birch, as the season might dictate, she would call out to her husband, Darling, I have invented something, and, then would, and would then go to fill his patient ears with enthusiastic a highly unintelligible and esoteric gabble about knitting. That's Elizabeth Zimmerman. And I just find every year reading it just does something, warms my heart. And so um, Knitter's Almanac. So that, like I said, was my original one. And I have little notes because I was, you know, well into going to do um, an, um, an Aaron sweater Um designing my own, you know, using my own things. So then uh, a few years later, many years later, it comes back and this, the commemorative edition came out. Um, same stuff, fun stuff. This was um, 2010 Meg Swanson um, updated it. And probably what you're going to see, there's a nice um, preface in here. There is um, by Meg, there, in, there is an introduction by Stephanie Pearl McPhee, and it has all of the designs in there. Um, just give us, um, and this particular one is given us color, um, color photos for the patterns. Um, the same patterns are in there, but they've added some color photos. Um, so this you can find you can find it um, Schoolhouse Press still has these wonderful little um, um, stories that she puts in here. The nether garments. I'm telling you, I think these would be fun for winter out of minis as well. So anyway, this is Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitter's Almanac, and of course I'd have it in my in my library, and um, so. Um, I just wanted to share this particular book um, in the books and bags section from my library. Um, what can I say? I just love it. I just love it. And I, there's so many fond memories um, of that as well. I did um, sign up. I'm still waiting to hear if I uh, made um, Knitting camp makes one says knitting camp in July. I'm anxiously awaiting the results. Linda, my Linda, Linda P and I go every year um, when we can. We haven't been in the last few years because of COVID. They we're not having it. So um, I am hoping to get an email in the next couple of weeks telling me that I have um, secured a spot for mid July in in Marshfield, and we'll see some of you there too. Um, if you get a chance um, to go, I highly recommend it. Um, Meg Swanson is um, is a dear, dear lady. She's um, a wonderful, um, um, so giving. Um, she's everything that you think she would be. And the group that um, comes to 2.7 at 5 every um, time is, they're welcoming. I've made lasting friendships there. Um, I look forward to them. You know, it's, it's 
like um, one of the other campers, Linda said, you know, it's a family reunion with family you, you want to be around. So I am hoping that I get into that. So looking forward to that. Now for the bag section, let's talk about what's on my needles. Since I finished my yume, I pulled out from a bag that I got from my kids a couple of years ago, a Vera Bradley bag, and in it is my Niagara. It is not pretty to look at, I will tell you that right now, because of what I'm doing with it. Here we go. It is Niagara. This is by Heidi Kermeyer, a designer that I really, really like. And so I am working on that. It is in here, and I will show you. I'll give you the particulars here um, from my notebook. If you remember, or if you don't, if you're new, because you... If you're new, you probably haven't seen this, but I started this in February of last year with a lot of intentions of having it done for the springtime, right? Talked about that before. You all know, um, you know, my story and then life just inter intervened. And so I put it away because there was no way I was going to get it done in the springtime. Um, but I did, I am knitting the um, size L1 on this with um, a four and a six needle. And the whole thing was, I saw a green sweater some years back on Pinterest. And I quite often see sweaters somewhere or um, not necessarily knit sweaters, but maybe uh, ready to wear. And they give me the inspiration photo. And so I saw this inspiration photo. And I wanted to knit something very close to that. And here's the ideas for what goes with it because I am, you know, fashion challenge. And so once I get it done, I'm going to go and try and find that kind of um, um, idea. And she's got it on with blue jeans and the turquoise, a white tank underneath. And so um, I have some earrings that this will be fun. Um, to wear. I have a pendant already, so I have some, some things to go with it to accessorize it with, and I am knitting it out of um, Santa Scarn Double Sunday Petite Knit in this green that I purchased last year from um, Mother Knitter. And this is an interesting yarn. It's nice and squishy, and I love this colorway. Um, in hindsight, I wish I would have done something else maybe with it because and held it with a mohair because I could see that. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I will get this done in time for St. Patrick's Day, but if I don't, um, there are several thought processes of when I can wear it. Definitely during the... Um, spring and into the fall and in the summertime because um and definitely at the mini meetup so i yesterday pulled it out and i finished a sleeve and this is the back and and also there is some on the fronts but you put the way heidi um has you do this is you put these on holders and you work the sleeves or the back you you work the sleeves first which i love because when I'm all when it's all said and done, I'm going to have my sleeves done, and all I have to do is the back, back and forth. So I have um, cast on it with it, and right now here's where I am on my sleeve, and there is those little lovely. I think those are so cool, and they stay on really well, um, and so um, that's why I bought another set, my little M and M stitch markers, and I have my progress keeper on here that my friend gave me, Kendra gave me, my favorite place to go, Starbucks. Um, whenever I'm on a knitting adventure, I always have to plug in there, where's the nearby Starbucks, because why not? So anyway, I'm hoping my, uh, I have to go seven inches, and then um, then, I, then according to my plan, my, my sweater that I do all the time, then I will start the decreases on that. So I am, I'm really liking this. I am using right now on the sleeves, and I use, all the way down, I use those um, Chaigu uh, minis 
needles that comes in the blue bag and I'm using the size six on that. So um, that's really cool. That I am enjoying so much those. I never thought that I would that I would buy those or be able to use those. And I started, I bought them just on a whim, um, the set, and I really used them almost all the way down to the cuff. Um, on this one all the way down because I can't because I can because it's a little bit it doesn't it's um, a garter at the end so it's not like a rib so I am working on that I hope to get some progress done on that and again it's in my spring bag for now you know and plus it's green and I knew where it was at so this will be my my bag that I carry or um, that I use here and I know what's in that so that's um, I, you know I'm also I never was a monogamous knitter, but I'm becoming one of those that I want to finish a project. And right now, I and that's part of the sweater project for me, too, is that I want to finish that sweater because I want to wear it in the season um, as well. So um, the other thing that I have is now that Valentine's Day, so when I go down to the knitting shop, I've talked about this before, I like to... Um, be knitting on yarn that I purchased at the shop when I'm sitting there in her shop and for Christmas my friend Becky gave me a new bag so this is going to be my bag um, you know for most of going down there right now isn't that super super cool and in that bag what I am working on now um, and it's a long-term project too and I, this is in my Easter bag I'm rushing the season but my friend Norma I've talked about Norma before um, she always would make me bags, project bags or um, cosmetic bags or little accessory bags. And she would always hunt out the um, Snoopy fabric for the season for me. I have a St. Pat's one, a couple for in my purse. And I have one in my purse and I have one for my notions bag that's in my bag that I'll take down to the um, Fiber Universe as well. So, um, you know, I... I I miss her terribly, but uh, she was so good and kind as well to me. So anyway, I am working on the Muscle Burl hat. As um, several people are doing as well. And this one again, this is a whip. This is one that I cast on back in November. And I've had a couple of different um, renditions of it. Let's put it that way. And um, finally had, a, had to add some stitches um, last week on it because I just didn't think it was going to be large enough so I am um, finally got it going and again this is just going to be a one that I take down to the shop and knit this is one you, for for those of you who have knit it um, you know it's mindless for a lot of inches so um, anyway I'm loving this this is knitted wit this is watery watery tart and this yarn was a gift yarn from a friend of mine, and she had purchased there from um, the Fiber Universe as well. So this is kind of my, uh, my two for right now, my, my knitting that I'm doing and, and trying to finish, you know, just to work on just a couple of things. Although, you know, I said I am I'm just dying to cast on something new and thinking about what to do about... Um, the autumn league I don't know what to do I am I'm, I'm so because I don't know what to do I'm doing nothing right now on it um, and I'm concentrating on my Niagara and then muscle burl at the shop because I can't I can't decide um, I, don't, I don't know where to go from here with it let's just put it that way so that's what's keeping me from casting it on and then I need to get back to my burrow cow burrow cowl as well because um, um, because I want to get some progress in on that too. Um, plenty of time to do that. So, okay. Knitters, that's all I've got for this uh, this episode. We're over, we're over an hour now. Gosh, I did. Well, that's what happened sometimes. Um, thank you so much. Again, um, I hope that you will comment below on, on several things. On um, the Row by One Sampler Cowl. Um, giveaway the um, 500 subscriber um, the 52 weeks of easy knits book that we'll be getting away 
Um, I hope to see you on Zoom this Saturday at 6 o'clock Central Time. Um, bring your knitting. Bring um, something to drink. Um, bring a munchie. I don't care. Um, and I hope that you will join me. And I, I'm hoping that we will build a com we will continue to build a community and that you will see others that you have um, uh, seen uh, maybe comment or um, and just maybe maybe as I am building new friendships. I have built some new friendships on Zoom and I am I am so happy about that. Um, it has um, it is filling it is filling um, a void there. Um, one of the things that I, that I am trying very hard this year to continue is to choose joy. Um, it's hard, guys. I know it's hard. But um, knitting brings me joy, right? Right now, and I'm doing a lot of knitting. And you all bring me joy. And those new friendships that I've met on Zoom at um, Knitting Adventures, um, my local yarn shop, um, there's so much. Um, our knitting community is a giving and uh, a welcoming community. And so um, choose joy. Choose joy, guys. That's all I can say. Until the next time, knit on. Bye.